what uh, I passed around some sheets and uh, if we had more time what we wanted to do is get people together and pick uh, one of the hazards that are on these uh, green sheets and brainstorm some ideas on how to uh, solve them and one of the issues about solving problems is where do you get uh, the ideas for uh, solutions do you uh, hire a psychologist like Fergal to come in and put us all on the couch and give us the pill that we need or are the things that we can do ourselves you wouldn't do that okay <laughs> sorry <laughs> no he, he's actually rehab so uh, he's an expert in in getting you to fix your problems <laughs> so uh, the International Labor Association has a stress prevention guide which is a, a great resource where it breaks down 50 different hazard, psychosocial hazards and identifies specific uh, ideas. Again, there's no solution that's, that's perfect for every workplace. You have to take the ideas and adapt them to your workplace. No one can come in and say, you got to do this, that and the other thing. Somebody can come in and say, consider this, that, and the other thing, and see which one works in your workplace the best. Uh, this is an example of workload, uh, and some ideas on how to uh, solve uh, quantitative workload. And if you'll remember, that was one of my red ones. So I'm looking at number two here, reduce unnecessary tasks such as control operations, writing reports, filling in forms, and registration work. <laughs> oh, I gotta look at them. <laughs> okay, emotional demands. Uh, the one that I really like here is if you imagine yourself as a healthcare person and you've just dealt with some traumatic, your patient died or something like that. Uh, the last one there, the possibility of withdrawing, you know, just that place to zone out and, and get your um, yourself together again before you walk out on the floor and, and face the next uh, crisis. You know, this, uh, again, it's a very simple idea. So, uh, so these things that I handed out are the guides for labor inspectors. Uh, it was originally Den uh, um, come out of Denmark, but when the EU in 2012 did their uh, cross Europe blitz on psychosocial, uh, Denmark shared these with all the other countries. And one is for uh, hospitals. Uh, the other one is for offices. Uh, it was a a five-page thing that said uh, offices on the front but said uh, we didn't translate the rest of it into English so in the the idea of saving paper I only gave you the four <laughs> but uh, what it goes through is some of the typical psychosocial hazards in each uh, sector it also uh, gives uh, the inspector some questions and uh, on how to uh, talk about this and also it, it also gives some ideas on some of the solutions on uh, these specific issues. So, for instance, in the guidance for the uh, tool for hospitals, uh, one of the issues, if you open the page, is heavy workload and time pressure. Uh, if you open to the next page, you see high emotional demands when working with patients and relatives. And then uh, near the uh, last page, you see violence, threats, and traumatic incidents. So what they've done is they've taken the typical psychosocial hazards for each sector and produced some guidance for inspectors when they're going in and doing their blitz. And uh, with that, I, I want uh, Terry to uh, finish off with a few remarks. I just wanted to bring you back to when John showed you the slide about when Catherine Lapel's study about when she studied the Canadian jurisdiction. Um, and I just wanted to let you know that he mentioned, he mentioned her international one too, the report uh, research. And just as a closing kind of comment, because the Mental Injury Tool Group, as well as like all Canada's efforts have been really great, uh, probably starting, you know, I won't say 2009, because there was people working on this way back. But my involvement started around 2009. The standard was germ 2000, coming in 2012 and all this. We went to speak to the Ministry of Labor in 2013 and, and had the very same slide up there that we showed you today where we asked them to do three things. And we're very, and so very, very happy to be here today at this event because this is the health and safety system of Ontario. Everyone in this room is committed to health and safety in Ontario's workplaces. 
And so this is the first time, really, that the although OCAL has been on the scene for a while, this is the great time for the Mental Injury Tool Group to actually be able to show our the work that we've been involved in to the health and safety system partners and to move us towards Catherine LaPelle's analysis of how jurisdictions evolve. So in her international study on this issue across the world, she said, and she told us this at the Ottawa teach-in that I told you about, because she presented this there. She said, jurisdictions go through three stages before they can prevent psychosocial hazards. The first stage is that they compensate chronic mental stress. And a number of speakers today so far have talked about that that's, you know, about to be said to happen in Ontario. The, the second thing, and I don't think the first two are in any particular order, but that they have to occur before the third. The second one, she said, was the they have to incorporate in their OHS language um, workplace violence and harassment language. So they've evolved to that stage. So when a jurisdiction evolves to those two stages, then and only then, can they prevent psychosocial hazards? And so that's from her study, from the international comparison. And so for that, I want to say that, you know, um, we well, we're we waiting for these uh, the, the collaboration stuff to come out between CCOHS and, and OCAL. We're very excited that, you know, this working group was even struck at that OCAL conference back in 2009 that gave workplaces and workers in Ontario an outlet to figure out what are some resources we need and now to be able to share them with the system is a very great day. So thanks very much for having me and thanks for letting us talk about our work. Thanks so much, Terry, and, and John, of course. And it's a tremendous amount of, of work that's gone on over the over the years, but uh, it is it is gaining steam and momentum, and we are very excited to be able to offer not all the skills and talents of John when you go to stress assess. You're going, we haven't cloned him on the computer, but um, the ability for workplaces to to be able to, or or working groups, it doesn't have to be an entire workplace, it can be a working group, a department, as uh, Terry talked about, to, to start on the road and engage in, in reflecting and learning about workplace mental health, reflecting what it means in their workplace, and then there's a tool to, as uh, Ken talked about, uh, get a a baseline for how things are going and then that creates a bit of a, a creates a heat map and then the heat map uh, can be used as a road map on, on, on prevention. So we are sort of back on, t on time um, in terms of we have lunch scheduled at 1230. Um, I don't know if there's any questions. I know there was a question earlier um, online as well as here about comparing the what used to be the mental injury toolkit survey with what we and we're now calling stress assess uh, in its web uh, version, um, comparing that with guarding minds at work. We, we didn't really want to spend a lot of time doing that, but John does have a slide uh, that compares some of what's included in the two different surveys that he'll put up um, that you can maybe look at over lunch. And it, it's some of its language, so some of the, there's similarities that are just called different things in the two surveys, but I think as you've got the idea of the cop suck and particularly the mental injury toolkit version of the cop suck now stress assess um, is is has grown to be more comprehensive to to reflect issues as as we've discovered them in the workplaces one thing I would say is uh, what the mental injury tool group says about that is attention on this issue is the most important thing more important and making than the survey tool you pick up there's lots of them you need to use the one like I said you have, uh, if you want one that covers all the aspects, you might pick up the cop sock. You know, it depends on what language and terminology you want to use. It depends on, on all kinds of things. But the bottom line is any action is good action. Yeah, that's great. Thanks, Terry. And oh, I owe you an umbrella, too. <laughs> and John, would you like an umbrella? I didn't want to mm -hmm. just. Okay. So, have you have one. Good. Okay. So, any questions in the room, though, or any questions online that we can hit on before we break for lunch? Oh, yeah. Oh, Kimberly, you need that. Okay. So the um, well, maybe you want to. App is using uh, the Danish data, but uh, Alan's working hard on a, a new version that will um, change that to the Canadian data. So stress assess and the stress assess app. Uh, so the personal version and the and the um, organizational version will both use the Canadian data. 
But it is, it's particularly with this aspirational language that the minister used this morning, um, we don't necessarily want to aspire to be the average of a bunch of bullied Canadians. Um, so, so it's a start. It's a start to reflect uh, your workplace, um, and then I, and then, but then, if we want to aspire to be best in the world, then we can't just look. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Um, this is this is why I didn't want to show it. <laughs> <laughs> it's very small, so you might have to walk up here and have a look. But this is a comparison of the coverage of the two surveys. So anything in yellow is something that's covered by the uh, COPSAC, but not uh, by the Guarding Minds at Work. And the one line in the pink is uh, something that's covered by the Guarding Minds at Work that's not covered by... Uh, and uh, we could probably talk uh, for a good hour on, on why these things are. But uh, if, if you want to ask me, uh, come see me. But uh, I don't want to keep you from lunch and... Uh, <laughs> But, uh, yes. Oh, yeah. Do you want this mic, Martin? Or? Um, I guess the comparison is usually between the uh, the Copenhagen instrument and the PF13 in guarding minds at work, which is the long, more comparable thing, and that's a reasonable comparison. But I, I worry sometimes that we lose sight of the fact that within guarding minds at work, there is actually a shorter survey that actually has probably more pedigree than the longer one, in the sense that it was developed by Health Canada. Uh, by yourself. The 1990s. <laughs> yeah, actually, yeah. <laughs> um, but it's gone through some iterations, and, and I think that it focuses on six factors. It's, there's literally six questions. It's in Guarding Minds at Work, it's positioned as a, an initial scan. So it's not trying to sort of hog the limelight in the sense of saying this covers everything. It certainly doesn't cover what the Copenhagen covers. But it does cover demand, control, effort, reward, supervisory support, fairness, and respect. So those six items really are considered disproportionately important as as ways of identifying psychosocially hazardous environments and that's really all it does it just short shines a light in dark corners so um, I, I think you know this comparison is very useful and very important I, I just don't want to um, let that shorter instrument called the SSIX the initial scan in guarding lines of work sort of completely you know fade off the off the landscape, so to speak. No, and, and I would uh, reiterate that too. Uh, when we did the, uh, we did a, we had a conference once where we had uh, a large number of people and we gave them seven uh, surveys and one of them was the short one. And uh, when when I combined the short one with the, uh, the, the health outcomes from the, the COPSUC, it was one of the strongest predictors of health outcomes. So it, even though it's only six questions, it was a very strong performer compared to uh, the other ones. Uh, so it was a small sample, however. I think we only had about 45 people, but they all filled out uh, a very dedicated bunch, filling out seven questionnaires <laughs> right then and there for me. But uh, yes, I would agree. Uh, what we're finding is uh, what what uh, Terry talked about, face validity. Uh, if you give people a survey and you say we're evaluating uh, workplace stress, if you're missing something, they get upset. They said, this is a nice survey, but you didn't talk about what's really bothering me, which is, and what we're doing here is it's not just the COPSUC survey, it's the MIT uh, questions that we've added to the COPSUC in order to do it. But uh, I agree, uh, your tool is a, a very efficient uh, way of screening and very powerful also for predicting uh, outcome. Okay, thank you. So I 
think we need at least a half an hour for lunch. So I've got 12.10 now. So can we start back? Well, okay, it's 12.11. But can we start back? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Do you, do you want me to? Yeah. Okay. There is one question from the virtual audience. We don't want to ignore them. In fact, we're very excited that they're out there. Okay. Question. Okay. Okay, we start. Well, I'll start because that was one of the places we had success in our uh, lo when our locals uh, used the survey tool. So we had a nursing, a community nursing workplace that was there was a lot of bullying and harassment. Um, but what we found when we did that survey, and they had over, they had about a seventy percent response at least, which was really great. That, you know, when that's happening, there's other things happening. And in that workplace, what was happening was they were supposed to call the employer when they arrived in the morning at the first patient's house and call before they left. They had a 30-minute time limit to be in the patient's house. They weren't being counted the time they were driving between house to house. And they were, they were unhappy that some people weren't getting forced to stay overtime every day and others were, and they felt there was favoritism. So there was a lot of other things going on along with the bullying and harassment. This was the workplace where then their meaning of work and their love for their work was what interested the employer in really working with us. That workplace changed the whole way they dispatch calls. They changed to a geographically based uh, call dispatch system instead of having nurses rushing across the city. Um, so that what that did was it reduced the driving time, which reduced the need for only having 30 minutes, which reduced the workload, which reduced the forced overtime, which when I asked the worker again a year later, it's, a, it's an anecdotal kind of uh, analysis, how are things there? She said, the air is different here. So what they did, so in answer to your, the question, what they did was they kind of looked at what was going on besides the bullying and the harassment because it would have been very easy for that employer to pull out their harassment and bullying policies and have a session and have them all in and explain to them uh, the, the expectations without dealing with the 30 minute limits the call and the employer dropped the requirement to call in and out at every patient's house too because they found another way to record their presence there so all of these things and looking at what was going on along with, and we're right back to John's slides when he said that the chicken or the egg, does it matter if both things are occurring at the same time and you, and you kind of address them, you, can, uh, you get unexpected benefits. And one of the unexpected benefits in this workplace was to attend to the other things that were going on, which reduced the bullying and the harassment all by itself. And this place adopted a more collaborative relationship afterwards uh, I, I just want to add uh, you know to motivate a, wor a workplace to deal with this issue you, there's two approaches there's the carrots or the stick uh, the 51 billion dollars to the, the Canadian economy can be either a carrot or a stick it's a carrot if you're dealing with it and you're getting the savings it's a stick if you're going to ignore it uh, the other thing is uh, there are the uh, the four uh, items that come from the CSA standards, uh, which is the risk, uh, retention, excellence. Uh, the other thing is the legal liability. And here, Martin Shane's uh, work, again, can be a, a nice stick. I'm not sure. If, well, it probably was intended that way, wasn't it? <laughs> uh, but the other thing is just the right thing to do. And I, I remember going to an IAPA conference back in 1983. That's a long time ago, I know, and uh, he has passed away soon. But uh, he said at that time, you know, law is the conscience of those who have none. And so uh, that really stuck with me, and I thought it was a nice summary. Uh, sometimes the moral uh, argument also is the one that should be made with that. Uh, what, oh, what question is
can you repeat the question a little bit? Please? Okay, the question is about other offensive behaviors. And uh, you'll see on the card there, there's only four of them. Un undesired sexual attention, threats of violence, physical violence, and harassment. Uh, oh, we have discrimination. Discrimination is one that we added. The Danes didn't have that one, and that says something. But uh, I won't go there. Uh, we also have vicarious uh, offensive behaviors. And that's where you, you're not the victim, but you see things going on. And with the discrimination question, we don't define discrimination. We ask them to tell us what type of discrimination it is. So uh, they, for some people, it's uh, you know sexual discrimination or, or racial or whatever. But for some people, it's be not being in the inner clique. Uh, you know, it's favoritism and things like that. Also, there are extra questions that COPSAC has that uh, are available to us that we don't put on the standard one. But for instance, we were in a call center where we had a lot of mixture of generations. You got people right out of school, you got people ready to retire, and they were having problems with uh, intergenerational uh, issues. And so we put in things like gossip. Uh, there's a question about gossip. There's also a question about cyberbullying, uh, social media uh, type things. So we, we have other things that we can deal with if there are specific concerns. Uh, that we can customize, but these are the general ones that we, we start off with. I guess your question was more around climate of respect, that kind of thing, and more general without uh, identifying a particular... So they're there, yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Th Great. There are specific questions about respect and relationships and things like that too. And in the stress assessment, which only sort of flashed by when Sue did the presentation, there will be, uh, there, there's core questions that have to be included to be part of the validated uh, use of this tool and to validated interpretation of the results, but there will be other questions that can be customized to the particular workplace. And if, if people have issues beyond that, then they can talk to John uh, and, we, and we can do even a more customized version in, in those cases. Compassion fatigue, yeah, that's another um, another issue that we see in a lot of social uh, workplaces. So, okay, now if we want to have half an hour for lunch, I guess it's already 12.20, so we will, oh, maybe I should start here because the camera's there. So we will uh, come back uh, in half an hour, which is then at 12.50, okay? Thank you, everybody.